Hey guys, Barry here from TGS with another Microsoft Flight Simulator live stream. On the Series X, we're going to be flying through Hurricane Ida 2021 number 5. one forty-five in the morning, so late night stream. Not fully tired, but a little bit. Figured I'd uh, try and pull it off, maybe do like a roughly one hour flight. From Cuba to uh, about Key West or something like that, we'll figure it out in a moment. Shout out to Jay Smoke and Chat, what is up man? Welcome to the stream. So uh, I'll go through the usual intro, we'll go from there. I had 1.30 till uh, 3 planned on the schedule, decided to make a snack. I also went live on this game for 5 to 10 minutes. Wasn't sure uh, what I wanted to do officially, so I ended up backing out to make a snack, but we're back up and live, sorry about that. Nobody was watching, I'm pretty sure at the time, so it didn't really matter anyway. But uh, if you saw me live, that was what happened. Needed a snack, and I wasn't sure if uh, who was available for what. But it seems like this is the best option to go tonight. So uh, we're doing a pop-up. Cancel DVD. That was planned for 133. We're going to do 145 to maybe, you know, 3 to 315. No guarantees on length. Figured I would just uh, fly through the hurricane, try and do a trip and call it a night. Figure out, you know, maybe one hour flight or so, as I mentioned. And we'll go from there. Which covers the plan for the, uh, the night, pretty much. Plan for the game for right now and the night, all in one finish out the schedule for anyone interested we uh we're supposed to have flex spots one and two tomorrow afternoon 1 34 o'clock star citizen 10 30 plus a night flex spots might be uh flight sim and war zone possibly and on sunday super mario uh party on the nintendo switch around one o'clock that's it for the week covering the schedule definitely appreciate if you like and sub social support description also a website thegamersdecided.com via the links you can check out discord Razor Stores, I'm Razor Streamer. Rep Sports with a coupon code TGS for 15% off. Check it all out. For random chat, uh, watched Men in Black International earlier. We held GTA 5. Did the first full mission for the auto shop. Now we're doing this instead of Dead by Daylight. Up to once a month, I'm willing to uh, skip DVD, which is part of our you know once a week list. And play something else, so I'm taking advantage this week, the final week of August. DVD will be back next week, and this game will uh, actually... Actually, this game's not planned for next week. I decided to flip it for September, so this game will appear weeks two and four instead of weeks one and three, just to note that. So uh, I guess between tonight and tomorrow, we're kind of making up that lost uh, time. If I go around the world, I'm going to not mess with the time. We're going to do it the realistic way. If you look on the map, the hurricane is right here. You can see the clouds forming. You can see Havana right here. Tons of airports here. Uh, I might fly out of Havana. Ciudad Libertad. If I'm saying that right at all. Then the game crashed, so <laughs> so much for picking where we're going. But I think we should fly out of uh, Havana and just try to go to Key West. It should, should honestly take under an hour, even in a smaller aircraft. The smaller I can go, the better. So I'm going to try the smallest aircraft i want to do the uh, tiny cessna if we can't work that we'll do the da40ng a nice answer jay smoke i think we're playing a mario party on sundays for a bit be my first ever switch stream so not sure how it works i also don't know if we can do couch co-op plus online or if we can just do one or the other if it's one or the other obviously when i'm playing with electrovolts couch co-op's gonna win so no guarantees Sorry for having to reload the game, though. As you guys saw, it just completely crashed. Flight Sim does have some uh, bugs, but I'm sure they'll work them out. Takes so long to load in.
Alright, let's try this again. I will not record this for a video. Or maybe I should, I don't know. Figured, uh... Let's see. Savannah. about 47 in the DA-40 NG. I wonder how long it is in the other aircraft that'll get whipped around the Cessna 152. It's only an hour and seven minutes. I think we can do it. And nice to answer J-Smoke. I guess I'll record this just for fun, but uh... No guarantee it'll actually be a video on the channel, but... Let me just get the information. I guess I'll record a video while we're live here, no guarantee I'll actually use it, but uh, let me go ahead and get going. Hey guys, Barry here from TGS with a Microsoft Flight Simulator video. We're going to be flying from Havana to Key West, MULB to KNQX during Hurricane Ida 2021 in a Cessna 152 in the AM hours. So it should be pretty interesting. Hold on guys, I gotta cancel the bit. Why does it say 5.53 a.m.? We are not at 5.53. Let me reboot the game. Actually, hold on. Is there a way to reset this? It should give me live time. That's definitely not live time. Why does it say 5.53 Is it really 5... There's no way it's 5.53 a.m. in Cuba right now. Apparently, Cam Surge is over here. I don't think he's even on this game right now. I think it just shows you... Uh, someone showed me on the map once. I'm so confused why the hell it says 5.53 a.m. Sometimes this game fucks up with the times. That's why I'm trying to make sure it is 5:54 a.m. UTC but why is it 5:54 a.m. UTC right there that's what i want to know if we don't open the fucking xbox assist excuse me guys while we try one more time this is definitely not the way the stream should have started but Usually shows my actual time and then UTC time. And uh, we've had issues with the time aligning before where the game will tell me it's, you know, this time and then it'll be a different time when we load in. So I figured the best bet is just reload in. Instead of having issues. I do want to, you know, we'll do this flight live plus I'll make a mini possible video out of it. So I'll do a mini intro for the video while we're live, but. No idea what to expect. It should be pretty crappy weather, but we've flown in uh, this kind of weather before on previous streams. Press any button to start. Hopefully this is the last time we need to uh, try to restart the game to get it to work properly. First time it crashed, second time it was not displaying my local time and only UTC so I'm not too sure what's going on with that. But it should tell me, you know, 1.56am 
and then the UT, you know, UTC time as well. It's like a one hour flight, so we'll be flying like two to three in the morning. My time, uh, at least, once we get this going. This is 5.56 a.m. I think it's just setting it to UTC time period. It's not saying my own time, which is weird. We started the stream before a crash. It showed the correct time for where I live, which would be 1.56. But uh, 5.56 a.m. UTC is correct for the actual time. So we're just going to have to roll with it. I'll go ahead and uh, do a little intro for a video. I will answer chat while we're, you know, gonna live record so while live streaming we're gonna record a video and uh you know i can't promise the video will ever be released on the channel separate from the stream but i figured we're gonna be flying through a hurricane it's not gonna happen often this is a seasonal thing and it's not always gonna align this way we flew over a hurricane uh i think last week right over here where it shows captain surge he's not on right now but uh right over in this region i'm pretty sure that's where we left off we were flying around in the hurricane zero visibility crazy ass winds it was actually made for an amazing time though so that's why i don't do this video but we're gonna leave the time alone as we do it why'd the time change dude i'm really getting fucking tired of their time shit all right there we go 558 please stop changing Confirm my flight conditions off. Live and live. Hey guys, Barry here from TGS with a Microsoft Flight Simulator video. We're going to be flying from Havana, MULB, to Key West, KNQX, during Hurricane Ida 2021 in a Cessna 152. It says 5.58 a.m. UTC, it's 1.58 in the morning ET. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be an interesting flight. One, I haven't really flown at night much, so uh, this will make for an interesting experience. On top of that, we're going to be flying right through a major storm. So I figured I would set the flight up this time, unlike my other videos, while we're actually here. So I'm going to take off from the furthest point, yeah, north, Cudad Libertad. If I butcher any of these names, yeah, don't be surprised. Doing my best. Depart from there. What we're going to do is we're going to fly up to Key West here. Sing our arrival. It's about a one hour, four minute flight through a major storm. So it should be pretty interesting. I suspect once we get up to flight, it's going to be uh, about just kind of holding our ground and not getting whipped around too much. But I'm looking forward to the run. We flew, you know, in some uh, tropical storm slash hurricane conditions in previous streams. And we're doing it tonight as a pop-up, plus recording it all in one. If you're watching the video, it's stream number 5. If you watch a live stream, the video should be released eventually. Probably in September at this point, because uh, end of August right now. It's August 28th, 2021 to be exact. As per uh, the storm hitting in real life time. It's real life weather, so if uh, everything worked properly, we should be in nighttime hurricane conditions. Not sure if to be excited or scared or both. Because uh, it definitely makes for an interesting experience. Especially when you can't see. There's no visibility. You gotta run off the gauges. So here we are. I think you're gonna hear the, hurt, the damn uh, thunder already. Alrighty. that I don't have to turn on the cabin light in here that's a little bit much wish we had like small lights or something so we're gonna go ahead and uh, take off just to show you guys it's not really 
storming the game right here this second, like actually pouring or anything, but I'm sure as we fly out into the storm, it'll only get worse. You see the storm out there. taking off then we're gonna have to turn to our left Shoo! we got hit with the wind right as that bright ass lightning just went off there is no bringing up the landing gear on this little guy but uh we're gonna have to climb up to 698 probably gonna keep the engine we have a pretty good range on this but i'll probably have to drop the engine to a little bit lower pace at some point but for now we're gonna keep it up Welcome to Havana. Havana Unana. Good song. So, uh, let's be out. Basically, wants me to fly two nautical miles over this way. I'll be, uh, majority probably in cockpit, but I'll go into third person. Just taking the views. You can see the uh, wind's pushing me a little bit to the right. This is awesome though. It's gonna be awesome while we're over the city. Once we leave, we're gonna be out over the Gulf for majority of the trip till we hit Key West. So I'm just going straight, guys. This is all just natural turbulence from uh, the hurricane weather in real life, Cuba, right now. Go out here. Lowering it down to 16 on the engine. So we have 97.99 nautical miles of Hurricane to traverse here to Key West. We're going to be running mostly off the gauges because once we get out over the uh, the Gulf here, we're not going to be seeing jack crap, but uh, us and the pitch black darkness of Hurricane Storm weather. So should be interesting flight for sure. I turn on my cabin lights after we get out over the city. But look at us, look at us guys, we're not even flying straight. Look how much we're moving sideways right now. I'm like literally drafting sideways. I'm, I'm literally flying straight, but we're going sideways. That's how bad the weather conditions are right now. Cuba looks pretty awesome with all the lights on. Goodbye. Never been. Would visit given the opportunity. Just taking it all in before we leave on our tangential line of uh, path here. to gain some altitude because uh, as we fly out over the gulf here we're moving on such a tangent look at this this would be straight we're going like sideways in a, in a sort of pattern here so this is how it looks out here guys it is fucking pitch black we're gonna have the cabin light on quick with the cabin lights. I saw it for a sec. The autopilot decided to take over something and turn us, so sorry about that. But since we're going to be out over just the pitch black golf, 
little it's just pitch black off out here. We're gonna have to run off the gauges. We're about a thousand up in the air, almost under a thousand. So I'm gonna let the plane climb for a bit on a max speed. But yeah, we're gonna have to run off our gauges. I have nothing to go on but gauges here. We have no map. We have nothing but 93 nautical miles of hurricane weather over the pitch black off at you know, 2 6 a.m. Eastern U.S. time. Goodbye, Havana. It was nice seeing you, but I'm literally heading off for an hour flight into the abyss over here. Can't even see where we're going. And there's a ton of thick, mean clouds out here, which means, you know, we should be going through the worst of it eventually. You see the lightning. Yeah, otherwise, if I didn't turn the uh, cockpit lights on, it would just be pitch black. We're flying about 1,200, and it's not even trying to go any higher at max speed right now. We're still within the yellow. We're not in the yellow speed range yet. While realistically, you know, I wouldn't run at max speed on an airplane. Think about possibly leaving it go. See, our gauges are looking good. I'm not seeing any altitude loss. I did not mess with the trim, which is why I'm wondering what's going on. Kind of want to climb, so we're going to go ahead and climb for a little bit. I mean, I know it's nothing but the gulf below us, but that's what scares me even more, is that there's nothing but just open waterfront below us for 90 nautical miles to Key West here. Yeah, the hurricane's basically between Cuba and Key West right now, and it's heading up towards uh, Louisiana, so it's not obviously going to go directly through Key West, but for us at this current time, as you can see in the background, we're basically flying directly into the storm and through the storm to Key West, so I'm interested to see how this goes. It's very windy back in the uh, takeoff, but we're doing it right now. We shouldn't have to go too high up. A few thousand should be good. Even 2,000, I feel comfortable at this point. I'll probably let it taper out. At least we know we have 2,000 between us and drowning below. We just kind of let it do its thing. It'll dip, lose altitude, gain speed, and go back up, and eventually I feel like it'll even out. We're only 88 nautical miles out from Key West right now. I'll shut the uh, dash lights off when we actually can see Key West visibly in the background. Till then, we'll just run off the gauges. It's gonna lift right now, and then it's gonna go down a little bit. Eventually, it'll find where it's happy. If I go into uh, third person, there's Cuba back there. There's Cudad Libertad. And there's Key West, completely not visible. And you see the hurricane clouds out here. I don't know if we're being pushed as much right now as we were back in the city. The maps, the game's not perfect at getting the weather right, but uh, it's not too bad. Especially crossing 88 nautical miles, we probably most likely hit something. See, we're uh, kind of getting in the, the fog now, but we can't tell we're in the fog because it's literally just pitch black out here. It's going off the gauges. We're looking good right now. We just chill. For 86 nautical miles <laughs> of lightning. Last time I played, uh, we flew through a different hurricane. I think it was, was a Hurricane Gloria. It hit Mexico, and we were flying down the uh, coast of Mexico, the eastern coast, and we would go into really bad batches of storm, and it would just get really dark. Visibility would drop real low. Tons of lightning, tons of turbulence and wind. And then out of nowhere, it would just open up, and it would be nice and like chill for a bit. And then we flew directly into the eye of the storm, and it was just thick, 
fog, you couldn't see jack crap for no distance. If you know if you're gonna crash in the ocean, you wouldn't even know you're landing. As you can see outside, we're uh, we're up in the clouds, but I have no idea what else is going on out there. We are getting pushed to the left. I did notice after takeoff, it seemed like uh, the wind of the storm is pushing us slightly to the west. It is moving to the west, well, it's moving northwest from uh, Cuba to Louisiana, probably. So, in that sense, it technically would be pushing. You can see the plane getting pushed a little bit. It's not too bad, though. So we keep uh, correcting it every once in a while. We should be good. Goodbye, Cuba. I can barely see you back there. Oh, that's pretty cool. Catching the lightning. It's 2.12 in the morning right now. My estimate is that uh, we'll get there around 3 a.m. real life time. Right when I'm ready to get off to get some sleep. Because I've been up since uh, like 6 a.m. in the morning. And I also chilled with some uh, Cabernet and all that good stuff tonight. So Probably shouldn't be flying anyway, but it's flight sim, so who cares? <laughs> it's the beauty of flight sim. You don't gotta worry about the law. Actually, I have some videos on the channel. I landed at uh, Cerco Massimo in Rome, Italy. It wasn't the best landing. I think we landed three eight times in a DA 40NG. Or was it a Cessna? I forget exactly. But uh, we landed three times on Circus Maximus, which is no longer, obviously, the way it looked back in the day. It's just a, a field. Nowadays, I was there in real life over a year ago. And I uh, also landed in the Lincoln Memorial Reflecting Pool, which I'd probably be like shot down for doing that, but uh, we were able to land in the Reflecting Pool in this plane, I think, two or at least twice. You couldn't take off from it, there was too much resistance from the water, but if you pulled up on the, the side, on the, the uh, you know, sidewalk, walking area, I was able to take off, so. Can't imagine that would go well, though, so I don't recommend it in real life. Let's keep it this flight sim. Probably just like flying a 152 in a hurricane. Keep it the flight sim. <laughs> I would not recommend flying any plane in a hurricane, let alone this. Flight sim's kind of being nice to me right now. Because the weather's not too bad. We're gaining altitude a little bit, but that's fine. As long as we're not going down. Can we still see Cuba? You can barely see Cuba. It's about to go by. Bye, Cuba. Key West, 79 nautical, nautical miles out. Landing's gonna be fun. Cause we're, uh, actually I don't think Key West is in the storm. So we should have pretty good visibility on the runway for the lighting. I did do an Instagram post where I was flying in a tropical storm in New England recently and visibility was like zero. I could see the runway from maybe less than 500 uh, up, and uh, you know, I had to like look out the side window and spot the runway and trying to figure it out. And then a bus was driving on the runway. Pretty lucky landing, if you ask me. But we'll see how this goes. There's not much to do, but just kind of chill. Covered uh, about fi what 15 nautical miles already, or something. I swear it was up in the 90s when we took off from uh, Cuba to fly north through the hurricane. 
I'm not sure exactly how far out the storm is, but the storm is definitely, uh, it's right near Cuba, but I think the big portion of the storm is out over the Gulf right now. Basically where we're flying, so let's see what we hit out here. I'm going to check a real life weather map. Let me just peek down at my altitude. I'm going to be uh, texting and flying, especially if we go down here. Let's go on to current real life radar. I want to agree with me trying to check radar right now. So I'm going to try reloading the app. Apparently I got a bunch of ugly weather near me in real life right now. But just rain. Definitely not near the eye of the storm right now. The eye of the storm would have been uh, further west, but we're within the uh, the region of its storms, the outer bands, which can get pretty bad. So we'll see. Yeah, uh, we're gonna hit the outer. The outer bands are actually out by Key West. It, act it actually might be uh, raining in Key West in real life when we reach there in the game. From the weather map, it seems like uh, we might have some clear here, but eventually we're gonna hit some weather. See the wind just uh, swayed us right there. Definitely turbulent, but no rain yet. The entire aircraft's been kind of pushing west the entire time. I've been consistently having to uh, correct ourselves. But it was worse down near uh, Havana. Now with that, we're over the Gulf. Even though this is where the storm should be getting worse, the game's definitely not uh, giving us the worst. But uh, we could be in between the bands of the storm here. I know the eye should be to the west of Havana at this point. Over uh, western Cuba, but it extends all the way out to Key West if you look at a uh, radar. So we're definitely within the storm. Question is, where the hell are we at in the storm? If we get a lightning strike, we can see if the clouds are going on. You can see the clouds up there. They get really thick back here, hence why it's pitch black. See uh, Cuba back there. The eye would be somewhere out here, but not like you guys can see anyway. So. Forty-one percent fuel. We're going uh, pretty decent right now. One hundred four knots. Much faster than they'd recommend, but I'm trying to jet through the storm. I don't mind if we burn up the fuel. 
on like real life and flight sim, you know, we can go a little bit faster if we'd like and not worry about the uh, fuel burning. So we don't pay for it in the game. Ah, <laughs> in real life, I'd definitely uh, probably slow down to uh, the recommended travel speed. We're definitely going over. We're still within the green if you check the uh, knob right here. Our airspeed is... There's really nothing to look at for 64 uh, nautical miles here, but I hope that at some point we'll see the island and of Key West and we'll also hit some stronger bands of the hurricane. Da -dee -da -dee -da. It's been pitch black. <laughs> Can't see nothing. You can see the uh, the airport markers for Cuba. That's about it. Eventually, they're all going to be gone. There goes one right there. So we are between. We're so far between land at this point that we're about to lose all our airport markers. But uh, halfway between. Half point, halfway point was like 45 nautical miles to Key West from Havana here, so... The storm is upon us. We just ain't getting the crazy portion yet, but with 60-some nautical miles to go, there's plenty of room to hit with some weather. It's obviously right over us, but I don't feel like I'm being pushed around as much as you know I should be in this weather. Been able to hold steady right around... Uh, what are we at? 34.5 on altitude. Yeah, it's kind of a... It's the boring part of the flight. Staring out into the abyss. The most amazing part will be when we start seeing the lights of Key West. We locate a runway. And we safely land in crappy weather conditions. Showing the third person just to uh, take in the, the lightning real quick for first for the realistic experience but it's not much to look at out here <laughs> check out the views guys they're pretty good we got the golf on the left the golf on the right we got the golf behind us and the golf in the front and now wait till we actually see the lights of uh, Key West approaching us at some point we're gonna have to get another like 40 nautical miles, or if not more, out in, this, in these weather conditions. Just gonna ignore the heading indicator. I've been messing with my assist and, uh, Sometimes they can be annoying. Started off as a uh, noob, and I'm right in the, uh, I think the medium in the middle. So I'm not on easy, I'm not on hard. Just whatever the medium, middle experience is, it's pretty much what I'm running right now. Minus the markers, I have the uh, markers set on easy so we can see, you know, where to go for the airport, blah, blah, blah. 
Even though we won't visibly see it, we have a marker obviously at 55.3 nautical miles out. In real life, you just have to, you know, use your little good old compass down there and I can only imagine in a 152 with no navigation you just fly north or northeast until you saw some kind of land and then you'd probably try and navigate from there. The old school way. These planes are built. You, know, you whip out your map in these planes and look on a map for where to go. As in a physical map, not a uh, GPS. Unless the, you know, they upgrade it. If I bought one of these planes ever in my real life, I would probably have to put an actual navigation in. Nice little map to show where we're at. We almost covered half the trip. We are 40 some minutes into the stream. And it's two, almost 2.30 in the morning, but... We're probably going to stare at pitch blackness for another half hour, but we'll eventually uh, get to Key West. I think this is the most daring flight I've done to date. I flew through the hurricanes and tropical storms, made successful landings here and there. We, uh, we've done some cool stuff that will show up on our channel as separate videos from live stream. Flew from like Doha in Qatar to uh, Dubai using commercial planes. I got the airspeed warning like 5,000 times because I was just hauling ass and then, uh... Done some other stuff as well. Flew down the Keys, one of the streams from Miami to Key West. And our uh, plane engine like gave out. So we tried to land on the highway. Route 1 in the middle of the ocean and... The game decided that landing on Route 1 over the ocean means that you landed in the ocean. So that was the end of that story. But, uh, you know, plenty of other ideas for the channel as well. I was planning to do a uh, Detroit to Chicago flight at some point. I do want to do a transatlantic flight, JFK to, like, London or something, but uh, I'm waiting for the co-pilot days where we can actually bring on a real co-pilot. So, yeah, if I want to go on a quick break and a six-hour flight, you know, someone else can take over while we're live and make sure we don't go down while I'm gone for a little bit and vice versa, you know, kind of like the realistic situation. Cuba's gone, we're, we're nowhere. Just in the middle of nowhere. We're getting near the halfway point. I feel like the storm's not very bad right now kind of disappointing. It was a lot more thunder and lightning closer to Havana. You see some lightning out there. See the storms just everywhere around us. Just we're not getting thrown away, uh, thrown around the way I would have imagined. We are uh, at over 3,700, but that should not be high enough to avoid getting smacked around heavily. Our fuel. We only lost four percent that entire time. I suspect we'll make it. Continuing our uh, max speed on the engine. I'm going to vanish off the headset for 30 seconds here, put my controller down. It's going to continue flying. Hopefully it doesn't go down. I'm just trying to grab some H2O, so give me one moment.
I'm back. Plenty of H2O below me in the Gulf here, but we're a little bit high up. Can't even see it. It's pitch black. Is that another plane out there? Yo, who's that? I see blinking out there. There must be another plane. They just vanished. The hell? I see blinking out there. You see that red light? It's like a little pixel out there. No, those are, okay, those are my actual wings. For a second, I th <laughs> it's so damn dark out, I can't tell what's going on outside. <laughs> I know is that uh, we get lighting every once in a while from the uh, lightning and the hurricane, but the game's not really portraying the weather as badly on us as I was hoping. I mean, it is flight sim, so... It's not exact. It is on live, realistic weather conditions, so... We get pushed every once in a while, and we've definitely been... I feel like pushed on a slight angle from the direction we're trying to go the entire time, but for the most part, it's not too bad. Pretty sure there's a a band actually, you know, the outer band should be in Key West or close to it right now, so we should be getting. We're basically flying from maybe not the eye of the storm, but you know, 50% out to the outer band, so it's not the eye. There's obviously those spaces where there's no storm going on, it's just very windy. I think that's kind of... We're not getting... I can't tell if we're getting rained on, I don't think so. Normally you'd be able to know. Last time I flew in you know, heavy rain, you definitely knew it was pouring. So we're probably just in the high wind region right now. Or the game's just not registering the rain, it's one of the two. As you can see, we're just surrounded by thunderstorms though. Over halfway to Key West, though, we finally got our first marker in America from our flight from Cuba to the U.S. I'm pretty sure that's key. That's pretty sure that's our Key West uh, landing right there. I've landed many times in this game in this plane. This is probably the plane I feel most comfortable with, so that's why I'm in it. It's also the slow, one of the slowest in the game, but. This is uh, yeah, known as the uh, the beginner's plane. It's affordable. Pretty sure you can get them for under a hundred thousand real dollars. So realistically, you know, if you're in the flying, this is probably the one you're gonna get early on. The Diamond DA40NG was like three or four hundred thousand bucks at least, I think. So if I ever have a chance in real life to buy a plane, definitely gonna pick one of these up. You can always, you know, upgrade the engine. Blah blah blah. Officially under 40 nautical miles out. Just waiting to see. You can see the turbulence is picking up. We're kind of swaying. I'm not touching the controller at all. I don't know if we're uh, finally getting into some more serious portion of the storm here. In the third person, yeah. I would show third person more often, but it's worse than third per first person right now because we can't see anything anyway. So. Next, to anyone watching live? Doing a uh, quote unquote live recording, streaming it live, but also recording it because I might release uh, this little trip as a separate video on the channel from the live stream. Especially if it goes well. I just wish it was a little bit more chaotic out here. That's the whole point of flying through the hurricane. But you can see it's not pretty outside, that's for sure. We're nearing uh, 4K in altitude, but I'm not going to fight the plane if it wants to keep going up. It's fine by me. The further away from the gulf we are, the safer I'll feel in this pitch black weather anyway. We're getting pushed to the uh, side now. i got to correct. We got pushed off course by the wind. I have a co-pilot who should be dealing with the heading indicator, so I'm sorry about the pop-up. But I have co-pilot on for communications and stuff like that, and then I swear it doesn't want to do it sometimes. How's our fuel? Look 
here. We're at 35% fuel. I think we'll be alright. We started at like 50% or something. At uh, 90 some nautical miles out. The game would like us to go much closer to, you know, 65 or 95, whatever it was. We're going about 104 right now. That's, that was some mean thunder right there. So I wonder if it's finally going to pick up. Or it's just teasing us and we're going to like land in Key West without much issue. They want us to be at 958 feet. 34 nautical miles, so we're going to have to descend to about, a th I'll probably stick to about a thousand. We'll uh, probably, if we don't see the runway lights, we're going to have to go down the real low engine speed, real low, and we're going to have to put the flaps on a pretty steep angle to slow down a lot, and then try and just hope that we land safely. C2 airport showing up, so we're definitely getting closer to uh, Florida right now. Can't tell if I see something straight ahead on the map. If you look to the right of the time approach marker, there's land, I'm pretty sure. So I think we're finally seeing our first taste of uh, the US here. The fan is long gone for a good like 20 nautical miles at this point from view, so I guess it would it would make sense we could see it. In real life, I highly doubt you would see this in hurricane conditions, but being flight sim, it's not. It's not doing a perfect job of simulating how bad the weather should be in the storm right now. So we, we saw it on the map. It was a big cloud. Obviously, we're in it. It's just not beating me up the way I hope. Unfortunately, this is a uh, closed session for a uh, live chat. Just uh, doing a flight from Havana to Key West through uh, the hurricane, pretty much. So I'm pretty sure I have online traffic off. I have real life traffic on, but online traffic off completely. Turbulence is starting to pick up a little bit right now. You can see you can see the lights of Key West out there, which is a beautiful thing. Which means we will probably be able to see a runway and do a safe touchdown. We still got to get 30.55 nautical miles to go. time spent just floating in the uh, the abyss back there but we're finally making our way out we're going the third person here you got you can't really see it it's a lot harder to see right now there it is if you angle it right you can see the lights from Key West out there turn around obviously Cuba's nowhere to be spotted Definitely uh, respond to chat. I'm going to be uh, checking it out tomorrow as well, flying into the storm on a separate stream. I flew in the uh, recent hurricane that hit Mexico. I think it was Gloria like a week or so ago, or two weeks ago. Yeah, a week ago, right? Yeah, last week. I think I flew into it on, was it Friday? And uh, some areas were just horrible. You know, thunderstorms with a lot of turbulence. Some areas were just fog. You couldn't see more than like, you know, a foot in front of the plane. The pouring rain. It was a pretty awesome experience. I think the craziest storm weather I had though was in a tropical storm in New England. Uh, within the last week. Where uh, visibility was like zero. 
It was raining really, really hard, and I uh, was able to land. I think I landed, uh, I took off at like New Haven, landed in Bridgeport, Connecticut, I think. And all the, and all the real life airports were shut down, I'm pretty sure, at the time I was flying. So. The 152, I flew this plane, and we survived. So. <laughs> so you know it's flight sim, though. Obviously, you could survive in real life, but I wouldn't recommend flying a 152 into a hurricane. 26 nautical miles. I see you, Florida. I see you. Well, the hurricane definitely didn't beat me up as much as I thought it would. It was definitely a fun little flight. A lot of lightning. A little bit of turbulence. The question is, how's the wind going to be coming in for a landing? Because I'm pretty sure... As you can tell, the storm is extending all the way out to the Keys right now from Cuba. We're heading out into the outer bands right now. Twenty four point four eight is not too bad. Eventually I'm going to shut off my dash cams to, uh, I mean not my dash cam, my dash lights to get more visibility. Eventually we're going to have to uh, start descending. I'm going to let off the power. Down to about uh, where 16 would be on the engine. There. Which is this nozzle right here. But it's easier to look at that. In real life, you know, you'd have to get a feel for it. I don't want to send too quickly. I see a blinking light out there. Is that an airport or is that just blinking lights? My goal is to descend to right around a thousand by the time we hit that, uh, that 21.26 nautical mile spot. I really don't like diving into the Fingolf, but says we're about 3,000, so we got another 2,000 to dip. I'm going to let it even out because we're going pretty fast on speed. down to the 16 mark here. Still, well, we can see Key West, and it's exactly what it is, just an island out here, visibly uh, lit up. I don't have any idea where the hell the runway is. I think we were planning to land into the runway heading north. But I'm not sure exactly what the game planned. It might have, uh, it might have routed me to arrive from the west, from the west of Key West, it seems, and then make a turn 
and pull in from the, the west instead of the south. Can't really tell. We're just going to follow the, uh, the guidance by the airport here at this point. About 1800. My goal is to get to about a thousand, and then we gotta hold a thousand the rest of the way in. There's QS International, 13.7 out. The game wants me to time approach from the west. We'll just follow the uh, guidance of that. I'm going to trim the plane up a little bit here. Trim's gonna sit. I'm not gonna touch the trim for a sec. Seems like our trim's pretty good. We're holding just over 1100. Either just leave the lights on for the landing in the cockpit or just shut them off. We're cruising pretty good right now. Speed's looking good. Our altitude's pretty good for them wanting 958. Yeah, we're 150 over. I'm not that worried about adjusting 150 feet, to be honest. I might dip a little bit more, though. out itself. Final stretch. It's looking pretty clear for uh, the real life map weather, so.
so close. See the turbulence. I don't know if it's just going to pick up as we get closer to land or just because of our altitude. Turbulence is picking up. Picking up. You see the airport's right there. Basically, we're going to be yeah, 1.5 nautical miles out. It's going to basically turn us, and we're going to have to head right into the international airport. Problem is, can't tell if I see blinking lights out there, but I don't know if those are airport lights. I think they are. I think that's a runway. If you guys see it in the background, the one of the runways. Thankfully, our visibility is pretty good for our Key West landing here. I was a little bit nervous of uh, the conditions being at night in a hurricane, but our worst uh, enemy right now is the turbulence, apparently. I saw that lightning. It's very cool. Constantly, we saw the flash like the whole stream there. We got the actual, you know, lightning. Striking. Point three three out. Eight point two five. Get in the final stretch, guys. This is it. We are legit. That close. Flight from Cuba, Havana, or Havana, Cuba to uh, Key West through Hurricane Ida 2021 is very close to conclusion. I don't want to jinx it. We haven't touched down yet. It's a little bit turbulent, but I have a feeling we'll be able to uh, pull it off. We might be on a possible tangential touchdown to the, the runway. It might be at like a 30 degree angle with the plane. But done it before. I'll hopefully be able to do it again. Dropping the engine down the 14. My goal is to be going 65 or less when we go for the uh, official touchdown on the runway. I can see lights out there. Should be the runway. But it pretty sure wants us to come in from the west. Like almost direct west approach. How are we doing on fuel? Now we're doing alright. We're like 27%. 27% fuel. We're about uh, 900 feet high. They want us at 958, 5.5 nautical miles from the time approach. Only five, under five from Key West International here. Apparently there's a Sugarloaf Shores. 
And I ain't trying to worry about the heading indicator right now, all right? We're, we're in hur a hurricane, hurricane conditions that are not really that bad right now in the game, which I'm going to blame the game for that. They should be a lot worse than they are. But we've seen nothing but uh, lightning and little uh, yeah, turbulent sections here and there, so it's not too far off. But it could definitely have been worse. I really don't know where it's trying to get me to approach from. We're really going to be coming in from the uh, the west. Let's see. Need to put that seatbelt warning light on. Point eight two nautical miles to go. And it's gonna have us turn probably directly to the east to try and make an approach on the actual runway. If we would have landed on the runway I initially wanted to land on, we would have touched down by now. But I let the game uh, choose the runway. So it's bringing us in from a side, which means an extra handful of minutes, but... We'll just have completed uh, just over an hour flight from Havana to Key West and Hurricane Ida. I'm saying that right, 2021. More so, about 50% of the storm... Yeah, from the center of the storm to the... Uh, the reach of the radius, like half the radius was where we started in Havana and we flew out to the outer bands here that are in Key West. So we weren't in the eye of the storm, but we were in the storm, nonetheless. So it's a pretty fun little flight. I do wish it was a little bit more chaotic, but I'm just gonna take it. Can't tell if I see the lights for the runaway over there. All I know is we're gonna have to branch over there eventually in 2.2 nautical miles. So. myself up a little bit. Don't want to get too low over the golf here. Game wants us at a 9.50. Alright, so there's a runway right there. Which runway is it making us land at? It wants us to land here. So we'll just go there. Actually, I'm just gonna... I'll just go here. Apparently, uh, there's the two airports here. But we're at Key West International. No idea what runway this is over here, though. I'm about 4.49 out. That's a nice, nice long runway, though. That's for sure. Feel the turbulence picking up as we're approaching. Not ready to uh, flap it yet. Leave it on 16 for right now. Feel safe for flapping with a little bit more power over the golf. Because if we need to, we can get ourselves back up. Initial flap pushed. Flaps are beginning our slowdown. Sending my uh, throttle a little bit. 
2.9 on Kamala's out. Alright, game, stop telling me about the incorrect header. It's, we're landing. I don't think we're worried about the header right now. See uh, our flaps are on the first stage of three. Really, we're hitting some some speed bumps here in the sky. Apparently, dropping down to eleven. Flapped again. It tells me too fast, but afraid to uh, slow down too much right here. Oh god, there goes the wind pushing us. Oh god, the wind is picking up. We waited this entire flight for this. Oh god. Here we go. It's pushing us around. Fighting the wind. Flapping. Fucking ground, I'm afraid to hit too hard. Well, that was a baby touchdown. Look how soft of a landing. <laughs> Might have uh, had a little bit of stall noise there, but we were so close to the runway, I would not realistically worry about crashing from five feet above. That wasn't too bad. The plan was to end here, but I'm going to go to Key West International. There's Key West International. Wonder where the runway is coming in from. This will be the end of the stream and the video if I release it of this flight. That was where it told me to go, but this is where I initially wanted to go. 
went to uh, one of the, obviously there was two airports within this region, by Key West, and we went to the further one north, I guess it would be. Stronger flapping. We're getting pushed off to the side. We're getting pushed off to the side by the wind. Holy shit, the wind. We're getting pushed sideways by the wind. We're getting pushed sideways by the wind. Holy crap. What the hell's up with the wind? We just took off from the other airport. The wind was nothing like this. We fly down like four nautical miles, whatever the hell that was. You can hear the wind in the game. Listen. On the, the break. We're getting pushed by the wind right now. But there you have it. Flew successfully from Havana to Key West. Two touchdowns at Key West. The second one being a little bit scarier. The wind was definitely trying to blow us sideways as we were coming in. And uh, thankfully we landed. A little bit rougher than I would have liked but with the conditions and what was going on and the amount of wind and stuff we're experiencing right now. It was pretty awesome. Storm is looking pretty crazy though. But uh yeah, that's gonna be that. Definitely appreciate if you guys like and subscribe. For anyone watching live, that's gonna be the end of the stream as well. I might release that as a video separate from the stream, but we're gonna also end the stream on that note as well. That was definitely a fun flight. We're gonna do uh, more flying tomorrow for anyone interested in the afternoon. I think it's gonna be Warzone and uh, Flight Sim for our two flex spots af tomorrow afternoon, our last two flex spots of uh, August. They might come back in October, but next month I'm giving up our flexible spots for uh, our once a month list, which had games like Battlefield 1, Battlefield 5, blah, 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 for one last hurrah. But uh, Flight Sim's one of our games we play one full afternoon once every two weeks. This was an off week, but we're holding it anyway, because uh, for September we're flipping it. We'll play this game week number two and four of September instead of weeks one and three. So we're playing it now. We'll play it tomorrow. And then uh, next week we will not have any flight sim, but the week after we'll be back. But tomorrow I think we're probably going to do more uh, flying in these hurricane-style weather conditions. And it'll be daytime, so we'll actually be able to see something other than just a pitch black abyss we witnessed tonight for like an hour flight straight. It was just pitch black and lightning. Literally sums up 90% of what we experienced here. But I'm glad we made it. I'm glad we landed. I had a good time. Hey, thanks for watching Jay Smoke and anyone else. Shout out to Jason, by the way, and Boba Fett. But it's 3 11 in the morning here. Time for me to get going. So shout out to Jay Smoke Mains Food Reviews all the way across the board. BBT on Patreon membership, Silence on membership, Super Chat, and we got Beastly Banzai, Mr. Ben and Shark on VV on Super Chat as well. Appreciate the support. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Like and sub. See you guys tomorrow. Peace out.